back on the Marching to Madness College Basketball Zoomcast podcast with my good friend Donnie Jones up at Stetson in the Atlantic Sun Conference. He took the Hatters. They had a 12 and 15 record last year, but it was a little bit uh, misleading, Coach, as you had a couple of baskets and, and several games just here and there that would have made a difference, I think, in, in two games, which would have set you up in third place in the a yeah, it was, Ken. You know, it was a different year. Uh, none have I ever experienced, or I don't know if any college basketball coach or anybody like yourself who's covered college basketball for many years has experienced uh, what we went through. And uh, I give our kids a lot of credit, very resilient uh, with the practice stoppages, the quarantines, the, the cancellation of games at game time, just so many uh, things that different teams and everybody had a different story. And uh, so our story was, you know, similar to that with a lot of stoppages and quarantines uh, at the beginning and the end of the season and with a young team, lack of practice, so many things. Uh, it, it was incredible uh, for what our team honestly was able to do towards the end of the season with how we got better and, and put ourselves in a situation. It was really cool. You got to play in the CBI. Uh, Pepperdine went on and won it, but, you know, you get in there. And I, it, it's got to be a good experience to get those kids in a tournament like that and then be successful. Yeah, it really was. So important for us, Ken. That was our first postseason invite in 50 years at our school. Mm. We've never been invited. Uh, we would have been in it the year before. We did get invited, but uh, the pandemic canceled all the postseason tournaments like that. So this year, we were fortunate uh, to get back into it, and we had a chance, uh, obviously, to play a very good Bowling Green team and got a win, and, uh, and obviously went to overtime against a very good Coastal Carolina team. But what a great experience for our team. And, you know, we returned back the majority of that group this year. As your guys started filtering in in the spring and summer, did, I was just curious about like their moods and maybe your staff and really, you know, how it felt to have all of these kids see each other again in what right now is as normal of a situation as we can make it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, we had six weeks with our guys this summer. Last summer, we had no time with them at all, Ken, especially the freshmen who had just entered into college. So this year was, uh, was as close to normal as it could be, uh, especially early on. Uh, you know, we were back to, you know, working out uh, normal and back to uh, uh, in the gym uh, and in the weight room both. So I thought our guys had a pretty normal experience. We still have to wear the mask, social distance, things uh, outside of the court. But I think for our guys to experience kind of the brotherhood, the team unity and togetherness, we had a chance to do that a little bit this summer. Uh, which was great, not only for the incoming freshman class, but last year's class that never got to experience that. Exactly. Rob Perry's back after leading you guys and scored at 14.9 points a game. He was seventh in the A Sun. Talk a little bit about his game and kind of introduce, you know, the nation to a really good basketball player that may be flying under the radar in these preseason, uh, uh, you know, futures lists for players. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ken, he's a he's an Orlando kid, and I've known of Rob for many years, being at UCF previously, and when he was a young kid, and obviously got this job and was looking for the best available kids in the area. And Rob was had committed to Tulane University, and then they had a coaching staff change, so he was looking for a spot. So I was able to pick Rob up. You know, Rob can really shoot the basketball. Uh, he's he's got a, a little different shot when you see it, uh, but he can shoot it from deep, uh, knows how to score. Uh, he's a winner, won a state championship there at Oak Ridge, come in with the freshman of the year, uh, his freshman year, second team all-conference A-Sun, uh, helped us to win 16 games my first year, and obviously Rob bounced back last year, and, um, you know, I thought he had a really good year to, uh, with all the setbacks that we dealt with as a team and lack of practice. And a lot of pressure on him. Uh, he kind of was somebody people had their eye on a little differently last year. But I think Rob's had a great offseason. He's changed his body, got himself in great shape. He's gotten stronger, Ken. And I think uh, Rob could take another step here this season. You got another kid there that'll play right beside of him, Chase Johnston, that uh, started 24 of 27 games. I'll tell you an interesting statistic. He and Rob took over half of your team's 667 three-point attempts. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, those two guys on side by side are, you know, two of the better shooters in our league and two of the better shooters across the country. Both those guys, Chase Johnson, ended up being a son freshman of the year as well. Uh, come from Westminster uh, mm -hmm. Academy, and uh, he had an incredible high school career, over 500 plus three point makes during his career, set a high school record. So, um, you know, he brings a, a ability to really shoot it, uh, really can stretch the floor, it took a lot of pressure off Rob last year. So I think this year those two guys could really feed off each other. I found another interesting number as I was, you know, kind of perusing the hatters. Christian Jones, he feels like a pillar of the program. He started 114 games in a row there. I, I'm just wondering if that might be a record. It could be. You know, yeah. he comes back this year, Ken. He had a chance last year to, to leave with the new protocols with uh, COVID, the NCAA you know, gave back last year to all those kids and uh, Christian graduated he's in grad school, but he played as well as anybody, uh, even in our league at the end of the season. So Christian's probably one of the most improved players on our team. Good deal. Yeah, Mohamedou uh, Diwara uh, yep. is back in that middle now. And he shot 56.7% and he led you in rebounding. Are you, I mean, are you looking at working on ways, you know, to get him the ball, I guess, even more in there since uh, he, he, he doesn't let you down? <laughs> no, absolutely. No, you know, Mo is, uh, we call him Big Mo. Big uh, Mo. Mo is, Big Mo. Big Mo is uh, obviously worked hard in this off season. Uh, he, he was plagued with some injuries during the season last year, which kind of gave him, I think, inconsistent play sometimes but we love Mo I think he's really improved could be one of the better big guys in this league uh, can really score the ball down on the block uh, we're able to open up the floor a lot for one-on-one -on -one situations with him with the way Perry and Chase Johnson shoot the basketball so uh, I think him coming into his junior year could really take a big step this year Ken. Coach, talk a little bit about your newcomers uh, and then what you were really specifically, I guess, looking to address with this class. Yeah, we, you know, we, all those kids that we added, which is five freshmen, you know, we've went the young route and we're kind of building them and growing them. Uh, but, you know, we really tried to address some athleticism and length. That's one of the things we really focused on. So I thought we really increased our athleticism. Uh, you know, the first kid uh, that we got, uh, is uh, big kid Alban, uh, 6'11", uh, out of uh, Miami. Uh, he's played on the Belgium national team. Uh, he come in at 185. He's put on 25 pounds this summer. Wow. Uh, he went on the scales uh, today at uh, 210. So it just tells you how much bigger he's gotten uh, in our program. And uh, he's, he's really long, athletic, shot blocker, can play the center spot behind Mo. Uh, another kid we got out of San Diego named Alex Crawford, uh, won a state championship, uh, was all state there. We signed early, 6'8", uh, mm -hmm. really athletic, uh, can really play multiple positions, a three, a four for us. A uh, local kid, Alvin Tumblin, from down your way there, outside of Tampa. I uh, went to Santa Fe Catholic, 6'6", uh, six, six, really highly recruited, uh, athletic, great defender, high motor, uh, just a, uh, took his team to the state uh, playoffs this year and um, was district player of the year uh, in the state of Florida. So he's, a, he's another athletic kid that can, can really make a difference. Um, we signed a really talented kid out of Indiana. Uh, you remember the kid back in the day named Teddy Dupay. You're familiar oh, with that yeah. name. Point guard of yep. Florida. Yes, sir. He, yep. he had some game. That boy did. <laughs> he, he sure did. And I uh, scored over 3,000 points in Florida. I was the all-time leading mm -hmm. scorer. But this kid I is very similar. Yeah, winner. This kid, Luke mm -hmm. Brown out of Indiana, was was uh, the top three for Mr. Basketball. Uh, he had incredible over 3,000 points in Indiana. Uh, took his team to the Final Four. Really highly recruited kid comes in as a point guard for us that can really, really, really shoot the ball for us. And then another kid named Tassos Cook out of mm -hmm. uh, Ohio, another athletic kid, strong, 6'2", athletic, can score it, uh, took his team to the state championship as well. So a lot of these kids had success with their teams, taking them to the states. I love it that they're winners. We're looking for kids, culture kids, as we're building Ken, that we feel fits our mold and uh, it's helping us build a program here uh, that can be successful. Yeah, it's kind of like the get old and stay old motif, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, right now we're getting older, uh, mm -hmm. but we've been young for these first couple of years. And so we went a different way instead of making us old, we're growing old. And I kind of like that. Growing mm -hmm. old. Well, I, I was, there you go. I'm growing old. I'm, <laughs> I'm joining you. I'm joining I know, you. Man. I, yeah, yeah. I tell you, you, you know, the, uh, I, I was wondering with all the length you've got now, did that come into play as you're trying to improve defensively, thinking about, you know, how length can, you know, deter passing lanes that can lock down yep. shooters? Absolutely. Yeah, we want to play more up tempo. You know, obviously I come from the Florida Gator days and you you was a part of that there with us. And yeah. uh, so you remember those kids we had, we had length and we had guys that could really press and run and, and, and be play multiple positions. So we've really tried to get, uh, you know, very similar to that in a different way to where we could have some length and athleticism and play faster and be able to press and defensively be more disruptive. I remember working camp there at Florida. Billy Donovan said, I might, and he coached in West Virginia at Marshall. Like he said, that I might have the thickest Southern accent he's <laughs> ever heard. I, I'll remember those words until I die because I think it was his first season as head coach or yeah. second season. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And he had the same accent from New York, man. So yeah. you could have said the same thing about him, right? We, we could have had a comedy show there. I think it would have worked. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's different. Maybe we could have been uh, Cosmo <laughs> Kramer's neighbors on Saturday. You're dribbling all the time. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I was his translator in West Virginia and nobody ever un understood a word he said. Right? He was in West Virginia and they weren't used to that New York accent. So uh, I'd have to translate to all the West Virginia people up there for him. Well, I grew up 30 miles below Bluefield. So I guess yeah. that's where I got it. I, I don't know. I've tried <laughs> to refine it, you know, as I've gotten old, but I'm kind of like now, whatever. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's you, man. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Hey, mm -hmm. I, I know you're laying the groundwork here, you know, I mean, keep the program on the rise. You've got great stability. What's been the challenges of kind of maintaining stability, like during such a uh, up in the air time, you know, with the pandemic and stuff? Yeah, you know, that's a good question, Ken. I think, you know, walking into a program that hasn't won in a long time is a challenge in itself. And it's, that's a, and just creating a culture here right now where you create an expectation I think Ken for this group and uh, for this program. And I think in doing that, you know, we've been committed to the process of growing it. Uh, then I say a pandemic kicks in. And of all the camps you've been to and me and all the clinics, no one ever talked about how to coach in a pandemic. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things we've had to, to really focus on uh, uh, still trying to develop these kids and grow them. But also, you know, we've had to go through a period of just keeping them happy and loving on them because it's been a hard time for all these kids across the country. You know, I think going to the dorm, being isolated, being by themselves, not all the things we used to talk about in coaching, uh, how to be together, how to be a team, uh, look out for each other, spend time with each other. You know, now we're telling them, Hey, we got to stay healthy, stay away from people, keep your circle small, you know, you know, can't sit beside each other and eat, wear your mask. I mean, it's been a tough deal. So, you know, with that, as you're trying to grow the other things, there's just been a lot of obstacles, but, uh, but, you know, that's going to make you stronger as we well know. It's all athletes are different. Coaches are different. Uh, that we're all about resilience. We're all about how we come back, how we handle success, how we handle with adversity. And, you know, that's just what we talk to these kids about here as we're, as we're building a program that just hasn't won in a long time. Last thing, coach, uh, expansion in the Atlantic Sun. You see Central Arkansas, Jacksonville State, Eastern Kentucky coming in. They've all had their moments, you know, in the Ohio Valley Conference and the Southland. Talk a little bit about the expansion and maybe why add these particular teams and how that, you know, got started. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, Ted uh, Grumford, our our uh, commissioner does a really good job. He's been a, been around for a while. He's he's continuing to build the brand. I think for the A Sun, not only in basketball but also in football. Mm -hmm. So, and with that, all three of these teams brought I think a football uh, product with them 
uh, as they continue to grow the football side for this conference and make it a stable conference. Uh, but in doing so, it helped us basketball-wise. Uh, obviously, those teams have had some tradition, and they've all had success, and, and they're very good programs walking through the door right now. So I know it's made our league better. It's made my job harder uh, to, to be relevant as I'm building. But, uh, but, you know, I've been in a lot of conferences, even as a head coach. I was in the Conference USA. I've been in the American as a coach, and and obviously now in the ASUN and SEC as an assistant for many years. But but I think uh, they're all hard, man. I think, I think there's always good teams and good coaches that a lot of people don't realize how hard it is uh, day to day. And uh, so it'll be a great challenge for us. And um, I'm excited. I think it's only going to make our league better. Some really good coaches and hopefully, you know, we may be a conference down the road that could get a couple teams in instead of one. Instead of one. How, how do they do the scheduling format? How's that going to work? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, they've kind of had a north and south or, or however they, they want to label it. We're all one conference, I think, overall, but we're going to play some teams on the, I'd say the south, more south side, you know, like we're playing Florida Gulf Coast, North Florida, um, obviously Jacksonville, Lipscomb, Liberty, I think Kennesaw State. Uh, we'll be playing those teams twice. That's kind of in our region. And the other teams will play each other twice and, and we'll play them once. So it's, it's, uh, that's how they're doing it. We'll play 16 games conference. 16 games in a conference, the Atlantic sun on the rise right before our eyes. And coach Donnie Jones here from Stetson is uh, one of the people that's uh, uh, involved in that coach. It's always a pleasure, man. I enjoy talking to you and getting together yep. like this and I hope we can do it again soon. Yeah, no, Ken, it's always a pleasure. Much respect for you and love your, you. love your show and what you're doing and uh, just, you know, continue to, uh, you know, watch you and listen to you. And thanks for what you do for college basketball and just sharing so much information here. That's just, uh, it's amazing. Thank you. Thanks. And of course, thanks to you and all the coaches. This is, let's see, this is an episode up there, 680 somewhere. <laughs> We don't know wow. yet. I haven't labeled them yet, but uh, over five and a half years. So, yeah, I'm Amazing. proud of it. I, you know, and I'm proud of everybody that comes on and wants to come back on. So, yeah, that's great. No, it's great to be with you and always enjoy it. And, you know, and just let's stay in touch. And uh, stay hopefully, in touch. hopefully we continue to do this. It'd be great. Right, definitely. Thanks a lot, coach. All right, Ken. Good to see you. Stay in touch. Good.